Hello, hello everyone. <clears throat> Here we go. Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? Are you ready for the word? Just wait for people to join. Today, let's see, let's see who, who's connected. If you're connected, say, send. One, one means you're ready. We're all ready. We're all ready. Today's topic is very important. Very important for you to know. Today's topic. Jesus is life. Let me see who's on. Good afternoon. Yesenia. Okay. Hello, hello. Okay. So today's topic is very, very, very important for everyone to know. I want to clear up some uh, misconceptions, wrong information. Uh, you know that if you get the wrong information, you're going to have the wrong belief, right? Wrong teaching, wrong belief. And a lot of people uh, have, let me see, one, one, we have ready to go. Okay. Share the video, share the video, call your friends and let us get into the word. Uh, so when it comes to Jesus, it's very important for you to know his mission, his purpose, his passion. Uh, the reason Jesus came to earth, the physical world, he needed a body, obviously. He needed a body to show up in this physical world. Everybody needs a body. You cannot enter this physical world, this physical dimension, without a physical body. Uh, you cannot have dominion in this physical dimension without a physical body. That's why demons look for bodies so they can control and manipulate people. They need a body. So when Jesus came, obviously, he needed a body and he got created a, a body for him with Mary. So our scripture for today, everybody ready? They're watching already and let me see where are you watching from? Pakistan, let me see. Okay. Hello, hello everyone. Mhm. Mm so here we go. So today's scripture is found in the Gospel of John. Chapter 10 in verse 10. So John 10.10 10 is our scripture for today. And let us read it when you have it. Say amen. We always want to use the word as a foundation. Amen. Remember, God is not going to talk to you away from his word. Because in John, same, same gospel, John 1 says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So a lot of people have the wrong idea, and they say, God told me that, um, uh, you know, I'm going through the sickness to learn something. And, well, God cannot tell you that anymore because He sacrificed His Son. He sacrificed His Son, Jesus, and by His stripes you are healed. And He said, go preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, 
if God wanted you sick, what what am I doing praying for you? Or what is the pastor or the evangelist praying for you if God wants you sick? Okay, we got Misty. Uh, the thief does not come except... Okay, okay, she's already shooting up the scripture, ready to go. My daughter shoots quick. Okay, so the, let's read it. Ready? <clears throat> and then, then we get into the... That God wants me sick. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Ten. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So here it is. It's, it's, it's very clear. Very clear. Oh, my God. Is that you? Prophet Hofer? Wow. I haven't talked to my brother Hofer for years. Blessings to you, my brother. Oh, blessings to you. Uh, we have Gordon Hofer, a friend of many, many years, powerful preacher of the word. And uh, I'm glad that he has connected. Let me see where am I. So back to uh, to the the knowing God and 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 knowing the purpose of Jesus. I, I need to clear this up because I know that there's a lot of teachings out there saying that God wants you sick, and they always go to Job. Always, they always go to Job and say, "You see, God allowed the devil to do this and to do that." And God did this and did that. But if you really, really... Uh, uh, let's go there. I know Prophet Gordon is watching, so I have, to, I, have, I have to make it very clear. Let's go to Job 3, chapter 3 of Job, verse 15. And you're going to find out how Job found himself... An open door for Satan to come and kill. Actually, it was the by the grace of God that Satan didn't kill him. He could have killed him. Not because God allowed him. Job. Well, let me see where am I. Job 3.15. Today. Uh, we're going to show you with the Bible. And. And see, the same people that tells you that uh, don't go to the Bible, they're the ones that go to Job when, when, when they want to justify their fears. Let me see, where is it at? Right here? <laughs> 25, I'm sorry. Job 325. I need to highlight it. I have a new Bible here. Here it is. So this is Job. This is Job after he got the, all the bad news, okay? And you need to know this because uh, today's topic is going to ruffle some... <laughs> I, am, I am reading Job now. Well, you better be careful how you read Job. You better make sure you, you read... Chapter 3, verse 25. Here it goes. For the thing I greatly fear has come upon me. And what I dreaded has happened to me. I am not at ease, nor I am quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. Trouble came to Job. And everybody, Misty, for the thing I greatly fear has come upon me. What, why do you think that every time God interacts with us, with, with someone in the Bible and with us, with someone in the Bible, he always says, fear not. God always introduces an angel, which represents God, shows up and the first thing he, he says, fear not. Why do you think that is? And then we read in Timothy that, God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
So fear does not come from God. There, some people confuse respect for God with fear. So this fear is not respect and honor. This fear is not trusting God. Actually, Job was sacrificing every day. He was afraid that his kids were going to uh, sin against God. And every day he was, he was sacrificing, sacrificing. Why? Because he was in fear. Let me, let me use this to clear something up with you. I'm not just talking about Job, but now let's talk about us. If you pray in fear, that prayer will not work. Let me say it again. If you pray with fear, that prayer does not work. Fear neutralizes faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. Actually, fear is faith contaminated. Satan cannot do anything to you without fear. God needs faith to connect, to communicate with us, and we need faith to connect with him and to receive from him. Everything that God has promised you, you have to receive it by faith. Even accepting Jesus, Jesus does not come and shake your hand when you come to the altar and you say, I give my life to Jesus. He does not come physically and shakes your hand, does he? He didn't do it to, with, with me. I don't know if I don't know if Brother Gordon is still there. Brother Gordon, when you accepted Jesus, did he showed up at the altar and shook your hand and said, good job? Or you had to receive him by faith? Oh, this is getting too deep. I, I, I thought it was going to be a simple class. Uh, Mama says tomorrow we're going to try to have the question and answer segment. And I go, let me just go for 30 minutes and try to explain this topic because most Christians most Christians do not understand the concept that we're talking about. Faith and fear, uh, Jesus, the enemy destroying, Jesus giving you life. They're polar opposites. Jesus made it clear. Now let me let me explain a little bit of Job so that we can move back to Jesus. There's a timeline that you have to understand in the in the Bible in, in life. There's a timeline. God was dealing with people before the cross differently than he deals with people after the cross. God was dealing with people differently than before Jesus dying on the cross than after Jesus dying on the cross. Why? Because when Jesus died on the cross, God took care of all the judgment of everyone's sin from Adam to the last baby that is going to be born. God took the sin of humanity and he, uh, according to Corinthians, Paul explains this in Corinthians. God was reconciling him. He reconciled with the world when Jesus died on the cross. So, Everyone that is preaching, you know, that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and now San Francisco don't know the timeline of God. And they and actually they're frustrated because San Francisco is still going on with all the all the parades and all the abominations they're doing. And many preachers and many Christians are waiting for the wrath of God to hit San Francisco. Well, the wrath of God already judged San Francisco but it was done in the body of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you understand. If you're understanding, let me let, let me know with the one. That means so far that I haven't lost you and you're still there. Let me see. I don't want to continue and you guys are not grasping. So, okay, one, 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 one. Okay, Annie, Susan, Misty, okay, mm -hmm. so share it, so here it goes. Anthony, Tony, I think he, he, he needs help or she needs help. Let's, uh, pay attention, I'll, I'll explain it to you. So here it is, everybody is uh, missing the timeline 
Job was not a born-again believer. Job was not in the dispensation of grace like you and I are. Job was not, Job is behind the cross. So after the cross, Jesus pays the penalty of sin of the world. That's why, the, this is the reason why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, and yet Christians don't love the world. The world is people in this in this instance. God loved people, every people in the world. That he gave his only begotten son. So that whosoever here comes believes in him. Or believeth, if you have the King James. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is, this topic, I've, I've, I've taught it in church a couple of times. And they're like, wow. So here it is. So Job. Open the door for destruction because he was afraid. And if you live your life afraid, and I'm saying this, I'm going to have to say it. I know, I can tell you this, most people in church today are like Job. That's why they are in fear. They are going to church in fear. They're, they're go if you go into church in fear, to avoid hell, you are going straight to hell and you don't even know it. Let me say it again. I'll say it again. I say it from the pulpit. I'll say it, I'll say it here in, in YouTube and Facebook. If you're going to church to avoid hell, you're going straight to hell. Mm hmm. Anybody else? Let me see. Shelly's in. Okay. Hey, I told you. Easy. We got it. So here it goes. Job says in Job 3.25, that thing that, that I fear the most has come against me. So he's telling us the reason why everything went wrong in his life. And some people are saying, no, it's uh, God told Satan, go ahead. God knew that Job was opening the door and he told Satan, please don't kill him. So at the end, if you, okay, so those of you that are reading Job, keep going. At the end, he's going to say, when God appears to him in a whirlwind, when he thinks that God is going to appear to him and ask him a couple of questions, right? In Job 38, I believe it is. I don't want to go through the book of Job. We're going to after the cross. And Job says, I put my mouth, I put my hand over my mouth. I didn't know what I was saying. So everything that Job said, he, it was, he was talking out of fear. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. The Lord never giveth and the Lord never taketh away for him. The Lord gave it, and the enemy takes away. Where is that in the Bible? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Let me let me take you to the my best, my number one character in the Bible, Jesus. So if you go to John 10, 10, Jesus says, The enemy comes to rob, to take away, to kill, and destroy. So anything that is taken away from you and is destroying your life, it's the enemies doing it. And many Christians, pobrecitos, I say pobrecitos, right? Welcome, welcome, son. You just connected, okay. Po poor Christians, they're like, and it's true what Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I've been in church for a long time, and just by hearing Christians talk, preachers from the pulpit all the way to the parking lot. Oh, God wants me sick, and God was showing me this. Oh, God took my mom, he took my son. Oh, God took my dog and took my cat. You know, like Job says, God give it, God take it away. God cannot give you and take anything away. Everything is His. Psalms 24 says, 
Everything belongs to him. So why is he going to take it away? It's his. It's always been, will be his. Now, who revealed that Job was attacked by Satan and not by God? Jesus. John 10.10. 10. John 10.10 10 says, Jesus says, The enemy came to do three things. To rob you, to destroy you, and to kill you. This is what the enemy came to do since the garden. And now... Jesus is the one pulling the veil off, pulling the mask off, and says, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. So, like I said, if you're going to church because you are afraid of God or you're afraid of going to hell, you are going to hell in church. That's why 50% of the people that are in church are not going, they're going to hell. Why? Jesus said it. The ten virgins, five made it, five didn't make it. The thieves on the cross, one on the left, one on the right. One made it, the other one went to hell. Right next to Jesus. That's 50% ratio in everything I'm telling you. Two will be in bed, one will be taken, the other one will be leave. That's one out of two, 50%. Five out of ten, 50%. Why? Because most people, and I say most people here in America, I'm in America, most people, most people serve God because of fear. They try to avoid hell. They look at God and like a proposition, I give you heaven or I give you hell. Which one do you want? God never made that proposition. You want to know something? Are you guys ready for, for something? That is going to blow your mind. Adam and Eve, they were ne they did not lose heaven. They were here on earth. They were not in heaven. Heaven was not made for man. The earth was made for man. That's what the Bible says. He gave the earth to the sons of man. So there's a lot of uh, misconception. Washington from Pakistan, my son from Pakistan just dropped in. Pastor Raza Gill. If you're in Pakistan, that, that's a good man of God right there. Pastor Raza Gill. Okay, so here it is. So most Christians don't have life. They have religion. And the reason they have religion is because they were taught religion. <laughs> taught religion. And now they're, 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 they're serving God in fear, not in faith. And it is sad to see it. And now with all technology and everybody getting on Facebook and, 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 and talk. The ones that have the most likes are the ones that are talking fear to you. God is going to do this, and God is going to do that. God's not happy with you. Uh, let's go. Okay, so let me tell you the timeline, right? You have to follow it. The cross of Jesus is the breaking point or the separation between after the old covenant, the old contract that God gave men, the old contract, in the new covenant the new contract you cannot go back to the old contract if you already in the new contract if you have a contract in your house to pay your house in 30 years with an interest rate of seven or however your interest rate is and you refinance you have to do a new contract the old contract becomes void and that's exactly what Hebrew says, that the old contract that God had with men becomes obsolete, void. So now we are under a new contract. It's called the dispensation of grace, of power over sin, power over the enemy. Uh, 
Now, Job had Job couldn't rebuke the devil. Job didn't have power to rebuke the devil. You do, and I do, as Christians, as children of God. Job was not a children of God. Oh, let me let me explain this one. Before the cross, the servants of God. Before the cross, the servants of God. After the cross, the children of God. Which one are you? Are you a servant or are you a son? Do you have sonship or do you have... Are you a slave? Galatians talk, talks about that. Are you a slave or are you a son? So Paul, the expert, look how God works. Paul was an expert on the old covenant. Expert. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was blameless when it comes to the law. Paul, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, perfect in the law. And he explains the new covenant saying, nope, without faith in Jesus Christ, you have nothing. Without faith in Jesus Christ and the finished work of Jesus, you have nothing. Without faith, you don't have life. Jesus is life. Jesus is not a religion. He says, he said, I've come to give you life. Oh, my. So you guys need to know before and after the cross. You need to understand that timeline. God is not mad after the cross. He already poured his anger on the body of his son. We were all judged. San Francisco, since the beginning to the end, everyone sinned. Okay, let's, let's go to... Uh, do you guys need Bible? I'm going to just quote Bible that you know. You don't need to go there. John 3.16. You know John 3.16, right? Everybody knows John 3.16? John 3.16 is not mentioning the church or the believer. John 3.16 is mentioning the world. For God so loved the world, including San Francisco and your mother-in-law. The one you hate so much. Everyone was included in Christ when Jesus died on the cross. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Here it comes. So that whosoever, meaning anyone, here it comes, who repents, you're not going to find the word repent in John 3.16. Look it up. You're not going to find it. For everyone who modifies his lifestyle, you're not going to find a modification of lifestyle in John 3.16. Never. For everyone who fears God, you're not going to find that in John 3.16. See, because John 3.16 is, is not dealing with what you do. Your actions. John 3.16 is dealing with God's actions. Not my actions or your actions. That's why you're not going to find the word repent in there. You're not going to find the word fear God. You're not going to find a way. Uh, find there in John 3.16. Turn away from your evil ways. Like you find it in the old covenant. Jeremiah told him, hey, turn around. Uh, Moses told him, hey, here are the top ten. Chronicles 7, 14. If my people will turn around, they didn't. No one. Paul says in Romans that no one look for God. Everyone went astray. No one looked for God. So in that time, and, and see, people that don't understand the timeline, they use Chronicles 7 and they say, 14, if my people will call on my name, will we'll humble. Well, they didn't hum humble. They didn't humble themselves. They didn't obey God back here, you know, on the old covenant. They didn't. God told them this, and they did the opposite. And then God will 
hand them over to his to their enemies, and they'll, they'll cry for mercy. And God, being a merciful God, he'll deliver them from his from their enemies. And then they'll say, okay, okay, we'll behave, we'll behave. God says, okay, if you do this, and you, I will bless you. And they didn't. And this is the part that preachers don't know, and 90% of Christians, 99% of Christians don't know. I, I, go, I go high. When everybody disobey God and betray God, and we, that we were, Paul, Paul puts it this way, when we were sinners, Christ died for us. It doesn't say when we repented, then Christ said, okay, now that 10 of you repented, I'll die. Like, like when, when, the, when in Sodom and Gomorrah, remember? God talk, talks to Abraham, and, and, and Abraham says, if it's 50 people there, would you forgive the city? And the, the 50 people could have saved Sodom and Gomorrah. God says, okay, I'll spare the city for 50 people, 50 righteous people. And then Abraham's saying, I don't think there's 50. And it goes down to 20. God says, okay, I'll do it for, for 20. And it goes down to 10. I'll do it for 10. And it goes down to 5. I'll do it for 5. No one was righteous. So Sodom was destroyed. Now most people see that story and they bring it over across the blood of Jesus. Here's the blood of Jesus. And you try, you try to jump over the blood of Jesus. Sodom, come on, come on. And you find San Francisco over here. And you're praying, God, fire like like, like fire and brimstone like, like like Sodom and Gomorrah. And God says, I don't know what you're talking about because I already took their sins, the sins of the world, and I put it on my son. Now it's different. Now, if they don't believe my love for them, they will perish forever. And most Christians don't know this. Oh, my God. They don't know. I went to Vegas, I don't know, three, two years, three years ago. And this guy is preaching in Vegas with a sign. Repent, all you guys are going to die, you know. He had a little bat stake, you know, like a little cardboard thing. The wrath of God, blah, 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 blah. Walking down the strip, you know. And everybody, excuse me, excuse me. And no wrath. No wrath of God came. They tried to shut down Vegas for 50 years. I don't know how long Vegas has been. All the preachers and all the Christians, they want to shut down Vegas. And they can't. And COVID, a demon of sickness shows up and it shuts, out, shuts down Vegas for the first time and shuts, up, and shuts down most Churches, so-called churches. I call it so-called churches. Because our church didn't shut down. So-called churches shut down with fear. Oh, my God. COVID. Ah! And Vegas, boom, shut down. What preachers could not do for 50 years, COVID did it in a weekend. What does that tell you, Christian? What does that tell you? You don't know God. You don't, you don't know God. Wow. Are you guys still there? So, see, this needs to be explained because you don't know the love of God. You don't know what happened at the cross. You don't know. That's why you go out and preach your nonsense. It's like, okay, right here says, if my people will humble themselves, let me let me break it to you. They didn't. That's why Jesus had to die. It's like these movies, right? Let, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you an explanation. Hey, Bill, my preacher, my preacher, Bill, is my son is here. Another preacher. Watch this. Here it goes. Have you seen those movies when um, some, uh, a bad guy or a, a, a robbery or something happens, right? There, there's either at home home invasion or a robbery at the bank and they have hostages right and this bad guy grabs a, a usually a lady i mean they you know obviously he's stronger than most ladies 
Now, now nowadays things are balancing up. You have to be careful. You might think it's a lady and it's, it's a guy. So, you, so this guy grabs a lady, right, with a knife, right, puts the knife through her throat. And this guy says, if you don't give me the money, I'm going to kill this lady. Or if you don't get out of the way so that I can escape, run away, I'm going to kill this lady. And everybody's, oh, don't kill the lady or the little girl. Oh, let's be a little girl. Don't kill the little girl. Okay. He says, okay, then do what I said. If not, I'll kill this little girl. Are you following me? So now we have a hostage, a hostage situation. And they have to be very careful how they deal with this guy because this guy can kill this little girl, right? And he says, okay, get out of the way. I'm going to run away in the car. And if you don't let me run away, I'm going to kill this girl. So everybody says, okay, 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 okay. And he says, move, and they don't move. Move, and they don't move. And then he cuts the little girl's throat. And once they once he does that, everybody says, okay, okay, he's serious, okay, go, 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 we move out of the way. Why are you moving out of the way after the fact? He already killed the little girl. You should have moved before he killed the little girl. Well, this is the same insanity that preachers and Christians are preaching when they don't know the love of God. God told through Moses, through starting with Adam, don't touch that tree. And he did. Ten commandments. Don't do this. Chronicles 7, 14. They didn't. So God says, if you guys, I'm going to have to sacrifice my son. I'm going to have to sacrifice my son because you guys are not getting it. So he comes, sacrifices his son, puts all our sin on him. And now that he paid the price, now you want to go back to Chronicles 7, 14. I'll humble myself. I'll do whatever you tell me, God. God says, it's too late. I already sacrificed my son. And if you don't believe in him, I don't care how much you humble yourself. And I don't care how well you behave. I don't care how holy and self-righteous you think you are i already killed my son you should have done it before now there's a new contract the situation has changed now jesus already died so get away from all this old covenant you trying to please god god says you can't please me he pleased god to sacrifice his son because he knew these people, you and I and everybody, are, are never going to obey me. So I have to sacrifice my son. And from this point on, after the cross, faith in my son and in the finished work of my son is the only currency that I'll accept. I do not accept your tears, your humility, nothing. That's why in John 3.16, you're never going to find the word repent because that's it's too late for that. God is taking matters into his own hands and he's saying, for God so loved the world that he sacrificed his own son so that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. And then if you read 17, God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world will be saved for him. And then 18 says, this is the condemnation. You want to know what the condemnation is? That they did not believe what the son did for them. But yet we have preachers and most Christians don't understand this. And when they see someone sinning or whatever they're like oh my god the wrath of god is gonna come on you it's coming on america it already came on jesus i know this this is too deep too deep for some of you maybe bill will get it 
So this is why when things go wrong in your life, you think it's God punishing you when he already punished Jesus. Why would he punish you when he punished Jesus? Trust me, most people in church are going to hell because they don't believe in the finished work of Christ. Most people in church are going to hell because they don't believe. They don't believe John 3.16. They don't believe that Jesus paid it all. And they beat themselves up and they try, they modify their lifestyle. And they do all this because they think that by doing that, God is going to look at them and say, Oh my God, where were you? Where were you before I sacrificed my son? God, where were you? I needed you. In Sodom and Gomorrah, he needed five like you. Self-righteous people. There was none. Paul says, I, I am the worst sinner. I, I need Jesus. I need the finished work of Christ. Uh, unbelievable. If you're alive, it's because God wants you alive. It's not you trying to stay alive. It's by that God is giving you time not to repent or turn or burn. No, God is giving you time to receive his love through his son. Once I realized, I told you guys my, my testimony. Once I realized that the love of God for me, I couldn't buy it and I couldn't do anything to earn it. Once I received that, then my life changed. Now I'm not condemned. Now the things that used to grab me, no more. Why? Because I receive life. And when you receive life, you are able to walk away from sin and from what's evil. You walk away from it because you are alive. But as long as you're dead in your sins, you you can be in church afraid and please God, please, please. Most Christians don't, don't have life. I'm telling you right now. Most Christians don't have life. Receive it, Papa. Receive it and accept the power, freedom, and peace that comes with the truth and everlasting gospel. So this is the gospel. Jesus said, go and preach the gospel. You know what the word gospel means? Good news. What's the good news to a sinner? That he's forgiven, right? Here's another one. I have to say it. Most Christians, and I'm going to... I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I'm going to bag on. Most Christians think that God is waiting for you to say, I'm sorry to forgive you. You or everyone in the world is forgiven. Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them. Forgiveness, it's already given. God is not waiting for you to ask for forgiveness. That's how you operate. You don't forgive those that offend you because you're waiting for them to come and say, I'm sorry. God forgave everyone on the cross before everyone said, I'm sorry. I think I need to stop right here because I think I'm losing people. I don't know. If, if you're still there, give me give me a two. Two, two means me too. Give me a two. Let me see. I don't want to lose you guys. What time is it? I, I'm going to stop. I think this is getting too deep. What I'm doing, folks, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm explaining the gospel. I'm explaining the timeline. Because Paul says in the fullness of time, there was a time when God sent his son, born of a woman, Mm -hmm. to set us free. That time for me was 2,000 years ago. What business do you have, if you're listening to this tape, what business do you have going over the cross and the blood of Jesus and go out there with Job and say, hey, Job, how are you? Oh, I'm here. 
when you are on this side of the cross, forgiven, and God waiting for you, God is waiting for you to accept, to receive his love. No, you're out there with Moses and with Job and hey guys, how you doing? Oh, we're terrible, yeah. And in Chronicles 7 14, I'm gonna humble myself. I humble myself. God says, Do you think that you you humbling yourself impresses God when he sacrificed his son for you? Please don't be so naive. Do you think that God is pleased with you? Like, wow, look at them. Everybody's humbling. I don't know why I crucify my son, but wow, now I have to, I guess. After the fact, after he died, now you want to be obedient and, and go back. Just receive his love and just walk in obedience. I'm not saying that we don't walk in obedience, but the way you're trying to gain your acceptance with God, it's not through obedience. It's through faith in the finished work of Jesus. This is why you see, and I'm going to end with this. Now you know the reason why Christians, most Christians, you can't tell the difference between those that don't have God and the so-called Christians. You can't. They're broke. They're sick. They're fearful. They're, they're full of anxiety. When COVID hit, everybody, everybody. When that thing hit, I don't care if they take the video down. They probably will. When that thing hit, Everybody, and God is looking at you like, what are you doing? I'm telling you, this topic, it's going to come up again. This is why so-called Christians are dying with cancer, with sickness, with disease, just like anybody else that doesn't know God. And Jesus said, hey, go preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, you know why most Christians don't receive their healing? Because they don't believe. You Okay, watch this. Christians are saying, no, no, no. God wants me sick. Okay. How about if you go preach to somebody that says, hey, Jesus died for you on the cross. Come and receive his love. And that person tells you, no, 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 no. God wants me to go to hell. What would you tell them, Christian? You sick Christian. You depressed Christian. What would you tell that person? Oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He sacrificed his son for you. There's salvation for you. Mm -hmm. But yet you don't believe that there's healing for you, that there's peace for you, there's prosperity for you. You don't believe it. But yet you're going to go tell somebody else, please, please, please. Everybody was afraid when that thing hit. We're going to die. Paul says, whether we live, whether we die, we belong to him. Why are you afraid of dying? You know why are you afraid of dying? Because you're not sure if when you die, you're going to see him. I know I'm going to see him when I close my eyes for good. I will see him face to face. But if you are afraid of dying, you are not sure. And guess what? Let me, let me help you. You won't see him. That's why the three Hebrew children, they, their faith, they went into the fire, into the furnace, and nothing happened to them. What ha where were the other uh, uh, 500 people? There were not only three that, that, that were captured there. There were hundreds of people that got captured. They all bow, and only three believe. So now, for us, here comes this thing, you know, the C19, you know. And pastors, starting with pastors, I, I'm not blaming just the but but the the, the parishioners, the the church people, the pastors, shut down, because they were afraid to die. To die, they were afraid to die. It wasn't being cautious and being wise; they were afraid that you will contaminate them. Why? Because they don't understand the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of His name. But yet they're gonna preach and say, "I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna lay hands on the sick. Lay hands on yourself. My God, preach to yourself. Wow. Are you catching this? That's it. I'm done. I know it's a little bit controversial, but I will get a little more controversial. Most people in church are going to hell. 
Maybe I should put that title there. Most Christians, the so-called Christians, are going to hell. Why? Because they don't believe. They don't believe John 3.16. And there's no repent. The word repentance, you're not going to find it there. I could explain it, but I wanted to stay like this. It would be more like, oh, then what do I do? I'll tell you next video. Or come to Faith Church, 5131 Office Park Drive. Come, you hear the gospel there. Then what do I do? Everybody tells me to repent. Mm -hmm. Not God. God tells you, whosoever will believe in him will have eternal life. See, the repenting part is over. They didn't do it for thousands of years. Did you know that? I'm done with this one. I'm done with this one. Did you know that Adam never said, I'm sorry to God? Did you know that? That should give you a clue. That's why Jesus had to die. Because Adam never apologized to God. He never said, I'm sorry, I repent. I, I sin against you. Never. That pride, that demonic, demon pride that he had, it infected everybody. And God says, this guy's not going to say I'm sorry to me. I have to go and die for them so that they can have life. But I'm going to change the rules. I don't want your sorries. I don't want your regrets, God says. I don't want your, 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 your self-beating. I want you to believe like Abraham. Abraham believed and it was counted for him as righteousness. If you believe in the goodness of God and in the gospel, which is the finished work of Christ, you will have eternal life. Read John 3.16, please. But most people that repented and came to Christ wasted your time. All right. Well, with that, if you want to know more, next video is coming up. Or come to our church, Faith Church in Bakersfield, California. You will, you will see the power of God. You will see the love of God, and everyone is welcome to receive life. Amen? Uh, Tuesday, uh, tomorrow, 6.30, right? This Bill saying Tuesday, 6.30. Yeah. Tomorrow, 6.30, we have a powerful class. And I'm just telling you, share this video with your friends. Most Christians are going to hell. Not because God is one, 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 wants them to go to hell. Because they don't believe in the finished work of the cross. They don't believe. They minimize the power of my Jesus. Okay. I'll see you next time. Enjoy your day. Tomorrow, 6.30 if you want to go. If you want to join us tomorrow, 6.30. If not, Friday, 7 and Sunday at 10 o'clock. Love you. And get off fear and move to faith. Get off fear and move to faith. Get on this side of the cross. Get on this side of the cross. Stop trying to impress God with your, uh, with your humility, with your repentance. God only, faith is what impresses God. When the centurion told Jesus, you don't need to go to my house, just say the word. Jesus said, wow, I've never seen such great faith. Believe the finished work of Christ and you will have eternal life and you will be free to worship God. Here comes, you will be free to serve God. I serve God because I am free of sin. I am free of condemnation. His, my sins were forgiven at the cross. I was forgiven before I was even born. Jesus died for me. Jesus is not going to die again for you. Or for the baby that is going to be born 10 years from now. All the sin already taken care of. I'll explain it some more. But just to let you know. That's how confused most Christians are. And they don't want to hear the truth. Come to Jesus by faith. Receive forgiveness. Receive healing. Receive life. And you'll never be again. It's the same again. You will never be the same again. Jesus said, 
the enemy is robbing you, is killing you, and is destroying you. John 10, 10. I've come to give you life and life, abundant life, everlasting life. Which side are you going to be on? On the life side or in destruction, death, and pillage? I mean, you just take it. Just look at, look, at, look at people that go to church. Their lives are destroyed. Why? Because they don't believe. I apologize. They're not hearing the gospel. They were never preached the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not being preached. And I will preach it through YouTube, at church, and everywhere I go. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you guys tomorrow.